Sargon, why didn't you do this five years ago, you moron? I just got through saying the other day, I said, now, whether you think she deserves an apology or not, the politically expedient move would be to just apologize and say, you know what? I made an off-color joke. I was a YouTuber. These things happen. I apologize to Ms. Phillips, and I wish her the best. Five years ago, he could have said that. Now, you still probably would have lost, let's be real, but, like, that's what any political advisor would advise you to do. Now, <laughs> instead... Yeah, Liz Truss lost her seat after talking down with the... Uh, Sitting down with Sargon. That's what any, like, it's, uh, you know, I have the political science degree, but, you know, it, it's just bachelor's. Like, I'm not PhD, but, like, it doesn't, it doesn't take PhD level. Just, hey, hey, look, man, you don't have to believe this. This Dick Mastersonism, too, by the way. You don't have to believe in an apology. You just apologize. <laughs> just say the words. You don't actually have to believe them. Is this going to fucking play? I swear to fucking God. <clears throat> you motherfucker. Why would it not play? Thank you so much, Carl, oh. for joining us. Thanks. What is he wearing, by the way? He looks like a fucking... <laughs> what do they call the table boss at the casino or whatever? The pit boss, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Always apologize. Like Dick says, apologies are free. Now you can believe them or you might not believe them. Doesn't matter. Just say it. Move on. If you, the more you dig in your heels, almost always, you know, it's fucked up. Now, my apologies for those who thought I wasn't on my A game for the interview, but I still thought I was pretty good. Um, you know, it is what it is, right? I'm not quitting. Uh, you seem to be one of the most banned men in the British media at the moment? I'm actually not very banned. Uh, I don't tend to court uh, media attention, though, because it's actually not very nice being in the eye of the storm. Certainly when Liz Truss did an interview with your colleague, she got a huge amount of pushback and criticism for that mm. because your colleague is associated with you and you said a joke, a crass joke a few years ago about Jess Phillips. You said... I wouldn't even rape her. That's correct. Would you like to apologize for those comments? Yes. Um, I think the situation in which... <laughs> he got promoted to macaroni sort of grill. Thing, uh, that sort of... Um, there's been a real change. Is that an ill-fitting suit? I don't know. In British politics recently. I like the black and white um, combo, but... Jess Phillips herself, I think, really highlighted this. At her By the way, he week. was kicked out of the Conservative Party... And he, he said, I've been suspended. Is this from today, by the way? Yeah, this is from today. This came out today. And he said, this emails to inform you that your membership of the Conservative Party is no, has been suspended pending an investigation into alleged misconduct on social media and involvement with a far-right rally. You're reminded that suspension from your membership means you may not participate in party events or meetings, including party conference. You are asked not to make any public comment or announcement. This includes posting anything on social media. Well, he didn't do that. Looking forward to hearing what I did wrong, I said... I was being serious. I said it was probably the I wouldn't even rape you thing to Jess Phillips. And then, like, a day later, he comes out with this. Finally taking tips from the Rafa Mal. For her uh, victory in the latest election, in which she pointed out that there's been severe coarsening in British politics. And honestly, it really struck a chord with me. It's fitting. Like, he literally the very next day apologizes. I'm like, dude, okay, well, first off, a little late. Second off, I mean, you did take my advice, but <laughs> it's late. Well, that's obviously true. Uh, she was putting on a very brave face about these things, and in other media interviews, it is ill-fitting. Yeah, she explained it's too small. That, well, she was trying to explain that she wasn't intimidated, um, but I think it was evident that she was because there seems to be real. A really hard edge 
um, underneath British politics now, which didn't exist. Terrible microphone, by the way. When I was being very rude to Ms. Phillips. Where is this mic? Um, the issue I guess I'm the last one to complain about mic quality, but. The injection of foreign sectarian politics. And there it goes. Liberal principles there it went. that underpinned British political life no longer obtain. Um, when I insulted Jess Phillips, I was horrifically rude. We can barely hear the motherfucker. Um, it was against the background of stable English political life, in which it was obvious that everyone. Was See, he's still equivocating. By the way, this is not the right way to apologize. But that when she was calling me various names like a misogynist or whatever, and I was uh, insulting towards her, it was evident that it was only just going to be words. That's all it was ever going to be, uh, and I don't think that's evident with what's happening now, and I'm really concerned about it. And I think that both myself and Jess have contributed to this atmosphere of political coarsening. And it occurred also, to not the right way to do an apology, blaming her at the same time, but okay. Um, around 20 <sighs> this is like the worst. Uh, even if it's true, by the way, you don't apologize like this. After the conversation I had with Peter Hitchens on the subject, uh, that actually maybe I should apologize to her. Um, because he had pointed out that it doesn't matter whether she accepts it or not. Because one of my one of the reasons I haven't apologized yet is because I genuinely thought she would just throw it back in my face. Uh, but Peter pointed out that it doesn't matter if she does. Uh, what matters is that it's the right thing to do to unconditionally apologize. And I've which you did not unconditionally apologize. By the way, I want you to be clear. I want to be clear here. This is not an unconditional apology. That's not what those sound like. But personally. Been through a long period of growth and reflection. Um, I've become a father many times over. I've uh, got myself a, a good education now, and I'm a business owner. And I look around now at the man I was then, and I think about the man I am now, and all of the responsibilities that I have, and the kind of social fabric we're living in. And I realise that yes, I was contributing to this. Um, so it is with. Without any kind of reservation, I'd like to say that I'm sorry to Jess Phillips, and I shouldn't have made such a rude and obviously offensive statement. And if she would like me to apologize in person, I'm more than happy to do so. And I'm not I going don't. to explain what or make any kind of excuse for that. Uh, it was just wrong. And I shouldn't. But you just did for like the two minute, minutes previous, you did that, but okay. I'd like to frankly present a better example to my sons uh, as they grow older. You had, and still have, a large... They gave this guy a working mic, by the way. ...influence online. Particularly a lot of young people watched your videos on mm. YouTube. Going through that whole uh, Gamergate scandal and... Oh, you know, God. You know, ...anti-feminist content and hundreds of thousands and millions of people watching this stuff. So you had a responsibility, I suppose, to those young viewers um, to, to say, to, to be civil... Hit and to, like! Um, ...to sort of show an example to them. Do you think you kind of let them down in a way? Well, not really. In, in the same way that I was describing um, the, the stability of English political life, it was the same thing with online discourse. Uh, it was very uh, inflammatory, um, but it was always... It's more inflammatory now. It's understood to just be words. And this was not an aspect of British life that was actually very controversial. Um, and it was... Uh, it was only in the most recent years where we've seen spikes in political violence. I mean, I myself was milkshake on the campaign trail. You do get milkshake, yes. Clouded Trigger sent one dollars on Rumble. I have no Gamer idea. Nigel What's Farage, that? I have no idea. Milkshake, and this this moves the political you got milkshake. The dimension that I think actually everyone should be very concerned about, especially. I mean, if it's just party politics. Fifty percent of the way there. That's, happening, that's, that's concerning. It. But when it becomes very deeply held, sincere, sectarian convictions, like over the Israel-Palestine issue, um, I think this is where we really need cooler. You cucked out on, I think. Well, now it becomes well, really imperative to set I a think, good example I don't know for, sure, but... for other people. I will be polite to Jess Phillips in future. I'm not going to be rude to her at all. You're probably never going to see her, but... And I do hope she accepts my apology in the spirit with which it's been... Just <laughs> cut him off <on> that <laughs> Yeah, I'm I'm not thinking she's probably gonna accept that. Um I don't know, maybe she'll surprise me. Uh Thank you for watching this clip by Colonel J. This is the King of Bold here. Remember to like and subscribe. Juice!